let us now take a look at how to render stateful component. So before we kind of uh, handle the stateful component, let's create a stateful component first and then let's kind of add the code in the library to deal with it. Okay, first uh, let us comment out the code that is not needed for this demo. So I'll comment out the render, render function as well as the set timeout method. Now let's create our first stateful component just to demonstrate it how it looks like kind of right so maybe i'll uh, come back to my application in here and uh, say let's create the component stateful component okay let's call this component alert and it will extend from tiny react dot component okay we haven't yet created this tiny react dot component uh, but let's build this class first to get the feel of how it looks like now since this is a constructor function or a class we can have a constructor as well. We will worry about props at a different time. And as a rule, every stateful component should have a render method. Okay, so this is how it looks like. And this render method will return a JSX, which represents the virtual DOM. Okay, now in this case, we'll um, I'll simply create a div with a class name of say, alert container, just for demonstration purpose. And uh, within this stateful component, I could create some DOM elements, say maybe H2. I'll call it as alert title. And maybe I'll create one more div that contains alert body. Some random content in here. So this is what uh, we want to render in the application. Now. To render this in the application, we'll say tiny react dot render and the name of the component is alert and this should be mounted in the root. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this. Later on, we will also kind of add state as well. Right now, I am just initializing it to empty uh, object literal linear. Okay, so this is what my component uh, looks like. So now we have to deal with this component in the application, right? So at this point in time, if I save this and uh, go back to the browser and do a refresh, uh, nothing will happen or some error would come up probably. Yeah. So let's take a look in the application. Okay, so you can see the error now here, right? So let's take a look at the console to see the error. So the error is this is not allowed before super. So this is fine, uh, but the error that is being shown on the screen is because of a fundamental mistake that we did here. Now, whenever we have something that derives from a base class in this case component uh, which is yet to be written and we have a constructor we have to invoke a method called super okay that's kind of the fundamental rules for creating inheritance structure in javascript now even after doing this definitely there would be an error because we haven't yet created the component right let us save this and uh, go back to the browser and do a refresh and see the output Okay, now we are getting the message super expression must either be null or a function. So this this is a good indication that we have to yet create this component, right? So let's go back to our dom.js and create this component. Okay, so we are in the dom.js file. So let's create our base class here. Name it as component. In React, uh, this is available within the react.component namespace. Okay, so this is the basic structure of this component. and um, And then at the end, in here, in this model function, we will also return the component. This should be good enough to pass the test case, right? So if I save this and uh, go back to the browser and do a refresh, let's see the output in here. So now we get the error that uh, cannot read the property type of null. Okay, because we are actually not kind of uh, handling this stateful function in our code uh, yet at this point in time. Okay, so let's take care of this. So let's go back to the code. And uh, let's put a basic thing in here called uh, constructor so that we have something. Okay, later on we may receive props as part of this. Props are nothing but parameters that we pass to the function. Okay, we'll see that in detail. And that's it. I think this, this should be enough uh, to get us going. Okay, so I'll save this and uh, again do a refresh. Again, nothing should happen at this point in time. Okay, we still have the same error, right? So now we have to go back to our application and take care of handling this specific type of function which is a constructor function. The code to handle this error uh, is typically in this dom.js file and we have to go to the mount component function. Okay, so let me quickly go to the uh, mount component function. Okay, this is the place, right? So we already have a case here for each functional component, right? Now the only thing that we have to do is to put an else block here and then 
create a new VDOM and this should come from a function called build stateful component which is yet to be implemented and we'll pass in the VDOM. The difference between the functional component and the stateful component is a functional component is a simple function that can be directly executed and the stateful component is a class or a constructor function okay, of which a new instance has to be created using the new keyword and then the render method has to be called because if you recollect every stateful function will have a render method right so this method has to be called which will return a virtual DOM to us. Now let us take a look at this build stateful uh, component function. Okay, the signature looks like this. Okay, we have a reference to a virtual element in here and the first thing that we do here is to kind of create a variable called component okay, which will be nothing but a new of the virtual element that we are passing okay and then we grab the type okay and then invoke it okay so this is how it uh, looks like okay next we get the next element to be rendered which is the next virtual DOM and this we can uh, get by invoking a method render okay, of this component object okay, render will give me the new virtual DOM and uh, once I get this uh, new virtual DOM I will set a reference to the component object so that we can uh, grab this later for comparison. Okay, I am just grabbing it for comparison. Okay, so with every uh, virtual element we have a DOM element as well as the component in case of component right and when this is done we will simply return this back to the caller. Okay, return the next element. Okay, so this is what the build stateful component function does. So it creates a new instance of the type call the render method you get the new virtual DOM set a reference to the component object and then return back the virtual element. Okay, so once this is done if I save this and go back to the browser and do a refresh you should see some output on the screen right so alert title alert body so the component is correctly rendered. So, so now we are able to successfully render a virtual component right so now kind of take a look at uh, how to pass in the properties to this component okay and uh, what are the required code changes to make it work.